worried that pearls aren't for this. They're for standing around and looking nice and holding your stuff for you right. Pearl, that's enough. If we're going to work together, you're going to have to listen to me. Harry did listen to you to Stephen didn't teach her to talk like this. She's a pearl. She's a maid to order servant just like the hundreds of other pearls being flaunted around back on home world. And she looks like a fancy one, too. Steven Universe back to the barn. We'll go enslavement and bathe her and bring her to me. Both are based on the idea that enslaving a beautiful person is exciting. It's about dominance and power being combined with sex which turns some people on. A girl who is born a slave and then grows up to become beautiful is instead about the contrast between her beauty and her circumstances. A lily among the weeds. This girl has an obvious dark side. Many of these girls are so beautiful, it's a curse, forced into wearing revealing clothing and often raped by their masters. Because of this, it's more likely to be the setup to a rescue romance. There is also more likely to be emphasis on the girl's purity as well and the idea that goodness and beauty can be found anywhere, not just in prosperity. Far too common in real life throughout millennia, wherever chattel slavery existed. Only beautiful slave girls that are born slaves or enslaved before puberty should be listed as examples. Post-puberty examples can go into a mated slave. Often overlaps with sex slave. Often represents the highest value goods in the slave market. Seen several times in Django Unchained can be owns at least three of these. Sheba is made to wear alluring attire and is apparently something of a consort to Candy. She seems pretty happy with her role. Broomhilda, on the other hand, is openly made available to Candy's visitors to show his hospitality and is traumatized by it. He also owns a slave who's forced to wear a French maid outfit. In Kamasutra, A Tale of Love, Princess Dara is jealous of her servant and friend Maria as they grew up and Maria got more attention due to her beauty. This scene is quite telling. Although the wives in Mad Max, Fury Road are portrayed by adult women, except Cheeto, whose actress Courtney Eaton was in her mid-teens at the time, in universe they are a bit younger. The circumstances of their enslavement aren't made clear, but at least Cheeto was at first deemed too young to breathe as shown in the Brickwell comic book. Also, Teresa was taken from her home as a child and only became an imperator after a brief and unsuccessful career as one of the more in Joe's harem. The Robe a couple of attractive twin sisters are being bid at the slave market. 
the heathen is to Marcellus to rise to buy them for himself but is outbid by the young Caligula, who ironically just wants them as companions for his elderly mother. Cassandra in the Scorpion King arguably qualifies. She is forced into manual servitude ever since she was a little girl by providing him with visions that give him a strategic edge over his enemies. And while she is very beautiful and her master certainly covets her, he is prevented from making any moves on her. Since Cassandra's powers are derived from her virginity, he fully intends on making her his queen after his campaign of conquest is complete and he has no need for her powers. Sodom and Gomorrah, Queen Bear always has a female slave by her side who is very attractive and scantily dressed. Almost all female Twi'leks in the Star Wars universe. Ironically, the most famous one, Lula of Return of the Jedi was, at least according to the Expanded Universe books, the daughter of a chieftain who was tricked into slavery at Jabba's palace after thinking she'd been hired to a prestigious engagement as a professional dancer and would be free to leave when she wanted. Even more ironically, the whole idea of the females being marketed as slaves was originally the Willock's quote idea, and the females were in favor of it. They thought that if they did it long enough, they could earn enough money to start earning it in a more honest way. Sadly, after several centuries, the plan hasn't seemed to work more than likely, it's given them a bad reputation. In fact, a lot of male Willocks turn out to be crooks who run the slave trade, Biff Fortune being one of the most notorious examples. Despite this, females sometimes manage to become either Jedi or Sith. The worst part is that for most will of women life as a slave on other worlds is still better than any life they could have on their home world, but will of home world is not a nice place. He Orion slave girls from Star Trek, though it's debated as to who's really in control. In an episode of Star Trek, Enterprise, this is subverted, because it turns out that Orion women rule their society, using hormones that mind control all men. This has become fan and discontinuity for obvious reasons, and the recent Star Trek, 2009, film seems to have made this outright canon discontinuity. Also, Drusilla from the original series episode with the ancient Rome planet. For this evening, I was told I'm your slave. Command me.